I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God is good. And all the time. Mukama Mulunji. And Nakuzona. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I thank God for the honor, the privilege, the joy of being with you tonight. And God willing, tomorrow. I really thank him from my heart. Thank you so much for coming to his house to listen to his word, to fellowship one with another, and to be encouraged by the experience of fellowship. It is one thing to be a Christian by yourself, and there is a place for that, but there is no replacement for coming together as a church family to strengthen one another. So thank you very much for coming, and may the Lord bless you individually through the message I believe that he has given to me. Before I proceed any further, is there anyone among us tonight? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? You are. Would you kindly stand? What's your name? Your name is what? Brian. Brian. Oh, I had a brother called Brian. How are you, Brian? Where are you from? Kampala. Brian, who invited you? All right, we have a microphone. Brian from Kampala. That microphone is as dead as Lazarus. Can someone put some life into it? Ah, there we are. All right, Brian, you from? From Kampala, Uganda. Now tell us, who invited you? Uh, Sharon here. Cheryl? Sharon. Sharon. Who is Sharon? Hello, Sharon. How are you? Thank you very much for inviting Brian. Brian, I say very seriously, thank you very much for coming. We're delighted and honored by your presence, and may the Lord bless everything you do. Let the church say amen. amen. All right, Brother Brian, you may sit. And Brian, don't forget this address. Come and see us again. Will somebody say amen? amen. All right. I saw another hand somewhere. Ah, would you kindly stand? Can we get the microphone to that? Where? Oh, oh, we'll come to you. Please don't panic. Let's start right here. And the light is in my eye, so I can't see if the person is good looking or not. Uh, let's see. Yes, he is. How are you? What's your name? That microphone is temperamental. Oh, I'm called Oloya Aaron. You call what? Oloya Aaron. 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 Yes. Hello, Aaron. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Keep the mic up here, Aaron. Where are you from? Kamuli. Okay. okay, all right. And who invited you? Pio Geoffrey. Who? Pio Geoffrey. Geoffrey. Jeffrey. Yes. Jeffrey, thank you very much for bringing our friend. God bless you, my brother. I mean that from my heart. And may God give you the desires of your heart. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. We're glad to have our guests. Now, there was someone back here who was very patient. Good evening. How are you? Hold the mic close to the top. That may solve the problem. Yes, put your hand, slide your hands all the way up. Now let's try it again. Is it working? No, it's not. Let Dr. Vincent repair the damage. Hello? Okay, there we are. What's your name? Margaret Nakato. Your name is what? Margaret Nakato is Margaret. My name. Yeah. Hello, Margaret. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Nice to see you. Where are you from? Chireka. Chireka. <laughs> yeah. Or Kireka. And who invited you? Letitia. Letitia, where are you? 
Oh, right next to your guest. That's the place to be. Our lovely, God bless you for coming. I really mean that. And may the Lord guide your steps right into his kingdom. Say amen. amen. Thank you, Letitia, for bringing your lovely friend to fellowship with us tonight. Anyone else? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. Ah, right over here. Right here. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's your name? Abasa Audrey. Who? Abasa Audrey. Audrey. Hello, Audrey. Hello. Where are you from? From Chanja. From where? Chanja. Kampala. Kampala. All right, all right. Okay. <laughs> it's very nice to see you, Audrey. Nice meeting you. Tell us who invited you. Well, she invited you, Mrs. She invited Esther, you. Yes. What's her name? She's called Mrs. Esther. Mrs. Who? Esther. Esther? Yes. Mrs. Esther? Who is Mrs. Esther? <laughs> ah, God bless you, Mrs. Esther. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming, Audrey. God bless your life and amen. make you a blessing to others. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Yes. Audrey brought to us my Mrs. Esther. Okay. Please stand. Good evening. Good evening, too. How are you? Fine, thank you. What's your name? Daisy. Daisy. Oh, Daisy. I thought you said lazy. Okay. <laughs> Sister Daisy, it's very nice to see you, Daisy. Where are you from? From Kampala. You're from Kampala? Yeah. What work do you do? I'm a hairdresser. You're a hairdresser? Yeah. But I won't need your services, so it's okay. <laughs> now tell us, who brought you here, Daisy? Who invited you? Diana. Diana? Yeah. Where's Diana? Right Thank next you. to Daisy. That's my sweetheart, Diana. Daisy, it's very nice to see you. Thank what you. What would you like God to do for you? What would you like God to do for you? Besides give your husband, what would you like God to do for you? <laughs> I already have a husband. You already have a husband? Yeah. Well, you don't need to. Okay, well, whatever you want God to do, may the Lord bless your life. Somebody say amen. 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 All right, Sister Daisy, my new friend, Sister Daisy. All right, anybody else? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist, but you are here. We'd like to recognize you. Get this light out of my eye. Ah, we have someone to the right. We'll come to you. I think Brother Vincent has identified someone to the back. Ah, would you kindly stand? Thank you, my good brother. God bless you. What's your name? Faith. Peggy. Faith. Peggy. Faith. 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 Oh, how are you, Faith? I'm fine, thank you. Where are you from? Bukoto. Kampala. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Just say Kampala. <laughs> Makes it. Who invited you, Faith? Mervin. Mervin? Yes. Who's Mervin? You, Mervin? I don't know. And that's your guest? All right, Mervyn, you don't like your guest? Okay, <laughs> that's fine. She loves you still, Mervyn. Uh, my lovely sister, Faith, thank you for coming. And may the Lord provide your needs in abundance. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, we have a lot of visitors tonight. That's a great blessing to us. There was someone to my right. All right, keep your hand up so we can identify you. We're always delighted to have guests. Would you kindly stand? Somebody here. Oh, oh, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. Don't, don't say, yes. What's your name? Patience. Patience? Hello, Patience. From Kampala. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What did, what did Patience say? Patience, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. Where are you from? Kampala. Kampala. And tell us who invited you. Ivan. Ivan. Hello, Ivan. Nice to see you. Patience, God bless you. Let's Please come again and see us. Will you do that, Patience? Good. She said yes. Say amen. amen. All right. Now we have a brother off to my right. Where is he? Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Nice. What's your name? Shamba. Who? Shamba. Shamba. Yes. S-H-A-M-B-A. -A. Uh -huh. That's a farm. Garden. Some, a garden somewhere in the country. Okay. And what's the name of the little boy you're holding? Malachi. Malachi. Ah, the last prophet of the Old Testament. Shamba, yeah. how do you do? I'm great. Is Malachi okay? Very fine. Bless. Good. Who invited you, Shamba? She's called mine. Mine. Mine? Yes, my wife. Oh, your wife. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's called mine. Okay. 
Sister wife, how are you? Nice to see you. What's your name? Esther. Who? Esther. Esther. Yes. That's Sister Shamba. Esther Shamba. Nice to see you, my lovely sister. God bless you for bringing your husband and for the little prophet Malachi. Let the church say amen. Amen. Say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. God is good. And all the time, how many of you love God? Can I see your hand? God, uh, God is happy to see that. He is happy to see that. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Ah, we have a handsome man right here. He's a guest. Uh, I'm not a guest. You're but not a guest. My guest doesn't wish to be recognized, but he's here. Who's that? Your guest. He doesn't wish doesn't to want be. to be recognized. No. Where is he or she? <laughs> Just do that. No, we need to see this person. Who is around? Where? Where? Who? This handsome man right here? Ah, would you kindly stand? Ah, what a nice man. How are you? Fine, and you, sir. What's your name? Godfrey. God who? Godfrey. Godfrey? Yes. Godfrey. How how are you, Godfrey? I'm fine. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Where are you from? From Nam Congo. Nam Congo? Is that Kampala? Yes. All right, okay. And Godfrey, who invited you? My great. Your friend. Yes. What's his name? Jonathan. Wanaka? Janaka. Jonathan. Jonaka. Oh, Jonathan. Uh, yes. Jonathan. All right, Jonathan, God bless your life on every side. Thank you very much for coming, Godfrey, and may the Lord guide your steps. And keep his hand of mercy on you until he comes to take you home. Say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Anybody else? You may be seated, my good brother. Anybody else? All right. Well, let's get to the message. God is good. And all the time. Let me say it again from my heart. It is so nice to see you. God bless you. I mean that very sincerely. May the Lord take you by the hand. Literally take you by the hand, guide you, direct you, discipline you when necessary, but ultimately save you into his kingdom. Can you say amen? amen. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 9, that the Lord is not willing that any should perish. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible says, God will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Ezekiel 33, 11, say unto them, as I live, save the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God's desire, if we will allow him, is to save every single person. But the reality is, more people will be lost than saved. You must make up your mind that you will be among those who will be saved in God's kingdom. How many of you want that with me? That's really what I want. I really want a place in God's kingdom and that kingdom is coming. All right, our subject for this evening, give to get. What did I say? Give to get. It is a strange philosophy. It is not of this world. It originates from heaven. So if it sounds extreme to you, it is because it does not originate from the earth. Give to get is a philosophy of a heavenly origin along with putting others ahead of yourself. That is a philosophy of a heavenly origin. And when people try to practice that on the earth, they look extremes. So our subject, give to get. How many of you have Bibles? May I see them? I didn't say phones, I said Bibles. How many of you have Bibles? Bibles, Bibles. Okay. Now, for those of you who have a Bible and a phone, I prefer you use the Bible because we're in church. But if the phone is all you have, then okay. But make sure it does not make a sound. The second favor I ask is that you pray for me while I speak. All I want you to say is, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. I have made that request hundreds of times, and there's a risk that it may sound routine. When it escapes my lips, it is not routine. Ask God to put his words in my mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And the Bible says the words of the Lord are pure words. And those are the words I desire to speak. And favor number three, I want you to think 
as you listen. Isaiah 1 18, come now, let us do what? Reason together, saith the Lord. Let's pray. Holy Father in heaven, thank you so much for sparing our lives today. All over the world, dear God, people died, but you've kept us alive, and your purpose is not that we might have one more day to sin, but that we may have one more opportunity to come to you, to put away sin, and to do what is right in your sight by the power of your Son. Forgive us, dear God, where we have gone wrong, where we have embarrassed you, dear God, and disgraced you before the universe by persistently sinning. Forgive us, Father, and let our understanding of your love for us prick our conscience and lead us to do what is right so that we may put a smile on your face and not pain in your heart. Thank you, dear God, for this congregation, a double blessing on all our guests who've come. Father, may they be so blessed, not simply by the message, but by the fellowship that they will desire to come back. Now, dear God, possess my mind, possess my faculties. Use me, dear God, as an instrument I will not resist. But bless not only us, wherever your people are worshiping you now, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless them, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen, amen. and Amen. Go to Exodus chapter 4. We'll read from verse 10. What's our subject? Give, Give to get. Exodus 4, reading from verse 10, and I read from the King James Version of the Bible. Exodus, the second book of the Bible, chapter 4, reading from verse 10. Should be an easy book to find, just the second book of the Bible. When you found it, say amen. amen. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, read with me now, who hath made man's mouth? Stop. God could have given Moses a long list of anatomical structures that he made. Who hath made man's mouth? What else could God have said? Who hath made man's eye? Who hath made man's ear? Who hath made man's finger? Who hath made man's heart? Who hath made man's lungs? Who hath made man's skin? God is telling Moses, if your mouth malfunctions, leave that to me because I made the mouth and I can fix it. Listen to our scripture reading. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. The earth is the Lord's because he made it. Let me say that again. The earth is the Lord's because he made it. Listen to verse 1 of 24 of Psalm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. What is the fullness of the earth? Well, yes, everything, of course. What is everything? I itemize fullness thereof. The gold in South Africa. To whom does that belong? God. If you read Genesis chapter 2 from verse 10, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. When God made the earth, he put gold on the earth. Not in the earth, on the earth. The gold was on the surface. There were no thieves back then. <laughs> the gold in South Africa belongs to God. The diamonds in Botswana belong to God, or Namibia, or DRC, you name it. The fresh water in the Nile River belongs to God. The air belongs to God. The wheat in the United States belong to God. The sheep in New Zealand belong to God. The cows in Argentina belong to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. The wood belongs to God. The wool belongs to God. The cotton belongs to God. 
The voice belongs to God. The reproductive organs belong to God. So they have to be used in a manner that glorifies God. Amen. That amen is too weak. Amen. The earth is the Lord's. Now we've seen the earth that's large is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. Go to Psalm 50. Let's read from verse 10, our subject, give to get. Psalm 50, verse 10. Does that clock on the wall say 730? When do you ordinarily get out? 8.30, okay, that's fine. Good enough time, I'll let you out before that. What psalm did I say? From what verse? 10. When you found it, say amen. If you have the King James Version, read with me. Read with me. For every beast of the forest is mine. Stop. Name the beasts of the forest. A lion, elephant, tiger, antelope, What's that? Giraffe? Snake? Buffalo? Hippopotamus? The, the beast, every beast of the forest is my, keep reading, and the cattle upon a thousand hills, sounds like Rwanda, upon a thousand hills, keep reading, I know all the of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Stop. This is not symbolic language. This is not from Revelation. This is literal. Let me say it again. That cow that you possess, in quotation marks, belongs to God. Amen. Verse 12. Nice and loud. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee why. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. If I were hungry, says God, I no need to tell you, all the bananas in Uganda belong to me. Amen. All the pineapples in the Philippines belong to me. My brothers and sisters, everything belongs to God except our sins. Those are ours. Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. We we'll read from verse 11. Our subject, give to get. 1 Chronicles 29, reading from verse 11. Do you have that? Find the books quickly. 1 Chronicles 29, reading from verse 11. When you found it, say amen. amen. Thine, O Lord, is what? The greatness and the, and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Stop. All that is in the heaven. What is in the heaven? Well, the sky is the heaven. Okay, what is in the heaven? The planets, the sun, the moon, the stars. What else is in the heavens? Angels. Angels. The Bible gives evidence that there are other planets where people live who have never sinned. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. God is the rightful owner of everything you possess, including your life and mine. Look at verse 12. Look at something non-physical. Read with me. Both riches and honor come of thee. Stop. Are you wealthy? That's a gift from God. Let me modify my words. That's a trust from God. Are you well known in Uganda? Do you occupy a high position? Do you enjoy the honor of people? That is a gift from God. God doesn't joke when he said, everything is mine, except sin. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thy hand is what? Power and might. Do you occupy a powerful position? Are you the CEO of your bank? Are you the personal assistant to Museveni? In thy hand is power and might. 
Not only the physical things belong to God, the non-physical belong to God. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore our God we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Read verse 14 with me. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort now nice and loud and clear for all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee now when you give God an offering finish my words you're giving God what belongs to him you see God gives to us then he tells us what you return it to me when you loan your car to a friend do you expect it back mm -hmm. listen again God entrusts and he tells us, use it in such a way that the returns come to me. So when David said, who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? Who do I think I am, says David? Whom do my people think they are to give God something? All things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. Go to verse 16. O oh Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand. Finish the verse. And is all thine own. Let me stress it again at the risk of being tedious. Everything belongs to God. And that lesson is taught very early in the Bible, as early as you can get. Day one, what did God make? Light. Light. Day two, firmament. Day three, dry land, water, and vegetation. Day four, sun, moon, and stars. I keep getting the right answer from the front. I need some answers from the back. Day five. Now stop giving me answers from the front. I want answers from the back. Day five. What did you say? <laughs> fish and birds. Day six, land animals and mankind. Now of the long list of things made by God, what was made last? People. So when Adam opened his eyes and Eve opened hers, they saw everything already in place. You see, the foundation of ownership is creation. You only have an absolute legal right to something if you can prove you created it. Listen to what God said to Adam, Genesis 1, 26, or what God said. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have what? Dominion, not ownership. You see, a man who has ownership does not have to report to anyone. I don't have to tell you how I drive my car. It's mine, not yours. If God had given the world to Adam as a possession, there would have been no need for Adam to go report to God as to how things were going. God gave Adam dominion. He gave him management. He gave him supervisory responsibilities. So Adam had to account to God. How are you doing with my world? Your life. You've been given dominion, not ownership. Your health, you have dominion, not ownership. That brilliant mind you have is a trust from God to be used for his glory. Amen. That's how we give back to God, you see, in the currency of glory. Amen. So don't use your mind that God gave you to say there's no God. Thank you. I need a few more amens. <laughs> you must be cold tonight. The voices God gave you are frozen. <laughs> when God gives to us, he wants it returned in the currency of glory. Now, the Bible has a system called tithe and offering. 
Hmm? Am I right or wrong? Right. All right. Don't look so sad by saying I'm right. There's a, there's a system of tithe and offering. The tithe represents how much? One tenth. That is fixed. And we give that to God. No discussion. One tenth. The offering is up to us. But when you have given your tithe, and I have given mine, the 90% belongs to whom? God, not you. Is this microphone working? <laughs> Listen to me again. If we live with that consciousness, God's work would never suffer. The 90% belongs to God as much as the 10. How many days did God make? Seven. Seven. Which one is his in a very special way? Seven. Today. When the sun set, the Sabbath began. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, a day begins at sunset. Leviticus 23, 32, from even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Mark 1, 32, at even when the sun did set. Even is sunset. From sunset to sunset, the Sabbath is celebrated. God says, the Sabbath is my holy day. But to whom do the other six days belong? God. God told Adam, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam, all those trees are available to you as sources of food. Leave one for me. That's mine. Leave it alone. But how many trees actually belong to God? All of them. You are God's legal possession. Which means that you and all you possess should be used for the glory of God. There was a man called Nebuchadnezzar. He walked on the walls of his palace, Daniel 4, 29, 30. And he looked around at this beautiful city. It was a magnificent city. The walls were so large, there were chariot races on the walls. And he said, is not this great Babylon that I have built? The moment he said that, the Bible says, a voice pronounced condemnation on him. He became an animal for seven years. Until he lifted up his eyes and acknowledged God. When we do not acknowledge, when we do not live with a consciousness, everything belongs to God. We are withholding from God the acknowledgement he deserves. It isn't, you know, when a preacher gets into a pulpit, he has to be careful not to take God's glory. But there are many ways to take God's glory other than in a pulpit. Go to Acts 12. We read from verse 21 of Acts 12. By the way, all those of you who preach, you should make this verse uh, one of the verses by which you live your life, or this passage. Acts 12, reading from verse 21. When you found it, say amen. amen. Read with me if you have my version. And on a certain day, come on, Herod arrayed in what? Royal apparel, sat on his throne, and did what? Made an oration unto them. He gave a speech, Herod the king. Next verse. And the people gave a shout saying what? It is the voice of a God, not of a man. Stop. What should Herod have done? Stop them. Don't say that. Don't do that. Don't praise me. Don't flatter me. Because you're giving me, finish my words, what belongs to God. But he took it. Read verse 23. And immediately, come on, the angel of the Lord smote him, come on. Because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Now, you may say, well, that's in the pulpit. No, 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 no. Any time we withheld, we withhold God's glory, we are subject to that punishment. You go to college, 
God has given you a gift for research. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. God has given to some men and women the capacity to learn and to research and to know. And they have tremendous knowledge which is to be used, finish my words, for the glory of God. And so you've gone to McCary University or whatever university. And you have your Ph.D., and the last person on your mind is God. God can take your life, which is also his. I am trying to get across to you the seriousness of living with the consciousness that everything belongs to God. If you agree, say amen. amen. And when we withhold anything from God, we place our lives at risk. You know why? The Bible says in Isaiah 42, verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory will I not give to another. When you withhold your offering, you're keeping back from God what's his. And in the process, hindering the work of the gospel. When you withhold the tithe, you are keeping back from God what is rightfully his, and he can prove it, and what he needs to maintain the work of the ministry. When you withhold your talents from the church, you are depriving God of something he gave you to be given back to him in unselfish service, and every act of unselfish service brings glory to the name of God. When you don't use your health, for the glory of God, or your wealth, or your brilliance, or your material possessions, you and I are depriving God of what is rightfully His. And in consequence of that, we may rightly say, we are guilty of, thou shalt not steal. I'll tell you something else. Your children belong to God. Amen. Now you have to raise them as if they're God's property. And you can't raise them on the television. You can't raise them on video games because they belong to God. Because video games will not develop a spiritually mature child. They belong to God. Your wife belongs to God. You can't hit her. Your husband belongs to God. Don't poison the food. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Why? For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. There are young people all over this place. Listen to these words from my favorite author outside the Bible, Ellen White. The book is Historical Sketches, page 285, paragraph 4. What did I say? How many of you wrote that down? You didn't write it down. Let me give it to you again. <laughs> Historical sketches. Page 285, paragraph 4. Here's what the author says. Every youth, and that's almost all of you, should be impressed with the fact that he is not his own. His strength, his time, his talents belong to God. It should be his chief purpose in life to glorify God and to do good to his fellow man. I'll recite the last part of that statement, then I'll ask you what's missing. It should be his chief purpose in life to glorify God and to do good to his fellow man. What's missing? Yeah. Himself. Let me preach two sermons in one. Himself is missing. Let me put it straight, right between the eyes. Any time you have a decision to make, there are only two questions to ask. Will this glorify God? And will this benefit people? And the case is closed. If you and I will make decisions based on those two questions, 
the problems we have encountered would cease. Why do I say that? Those are the two questions you should ask. Let's listen to the Ten Commandments. What's commandment one? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That expresses the relationship between the person and God. Commandment two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. That expresses the relationship between the believer and God. Commandment three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The relationship between the believer and God. Commandment four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That expresses the relationship between the believer and God. Those are the first four commandments. Moses was given two tables of stone. Commandment five, honor thy father and thy mother. That goes this way. The first four go that way. The next six go this way. Commandment six, quickly. Thou shalt not kill, yes, this way. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. That goes this way. Commandment eight, thou shalt not steal this way. Commandment nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And commandment ten, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house or his wife, his manservant, man's maidservant, ox, ass, anything that is anything at all. And if we would stop coveting, many of us would not be in debt. I want what she has. So let me borrow money from someone in the church. Let me borrow from the bank. Because his house is bigger than mine and I need one the same size. He drives a Mercedes and I drive a car with three wheels. I need to get a loan <laughs> so I can get a Mercedes too. Thou shalt not covet anything. And so the first four, God and I, the next six, God, uh, I, and my fellow man. Where do I come in? Which commandment tells me to love me? Come on, tell me loudly. None. None. Some people get very cute and they say, well, Jesus said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Christ is simply saying the same way you are self-centered and selfish and make you the focus of your life, that's how you treat your neighbor. In the law of God, there is no place for me, for I, for self. Now, listen to the Bible. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Come on, say it with me. Fear God and keep his commandments, the, the ten we just analyzed. Huh? Your duty to God, your duty to your fellow man. The Bible says this is the whole duty of man. My purpose on earth is to glorify God and to be a blessing to someone else. Now you may say, well, what about me? Well, what about you? Should I go to school? Yes. Should I get a PhD? Yes. Should I be the finest banker on earth? Yes. Should I be the number one architect? Yes. Because the more skilled I am, the more effectively I can serve my fellow man. Somebody say amen. amen. So yes, of course, the consciousness of your duty to your fellow man should drive you to make the most of yourself. So you give to your fellow man the best, the optimal service. And you glorify God to the best of your ability. Amen. My brother, my sister, vertical, you and God, horizontal, you and your fellow man. When the vertical is in place, the horizontal will be in place. But God says, he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? So this is proof that this is healthy. I lost you, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> this, when this works, it is proof this is working. Now let's become more particular. Let's bring it home. When you make it your business to finish this church, that's this and that. Are you following me? So God's people can have a place to worship that's attractive. You know, a lot of people don't join churches because the churches are physically unattractive. I'm not going to that church. I can't let people see me walking in and out of that church. People join churches because the building is beautiful, not because the church preaches truth. 
There's no churches because in the parking lot, all the cars are BMWs. We need a building that represents God. Can you say amen? Amen. And in order to realize that dream, we must forget me. We must take care of this and take care of that. And so when this and that dominate your life, you begin to say, do I really need another handbag from Gucci? Do I really need that? Or does God's work have a need? Are you with me? So I am thinking this way. Can I sacrifice something that I've always wanted and make that sacrifice for God? Yes, because salvation is based on sacrifice. Amen. And growth in grace is based on sacrifice. And so as God gave Christ, he gave everything he had, then Christ says to us, thou shalt love the Lord thy God, how? With all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy might, and with all thy strength, and with all thy understanding. God requires a totality of surrender because he surrendered to our need totally by giving Jesus Christ. And so we give to get. Give. And it shall be given unto thee. Good measure. Come on. Press down and overflowing. What did Jesus say according to Paul? It's not found in the Gospels, but Paul tells us in Acts chapter 20, it is more blessed to. I'm not surprised you said it so weakly. It's a saying that people don't like. But say it again. It is more to give than to receive. Because that's the way God functions. When you give... You're being godly. For God so loved the world that he gave. My brothers and sisters, your greatest gift to God is not money. It's you. But if you give yourself to God, everything you have is God's. Many people are baptized, but they never baptize their wallets. The purse goes unbaptized. The person is thoroughly wet. The purse is dry. When you give your life to God, give your wallet, give your degree, give your health, give your brains, give your influence. Withholding one renders ineffective the surrender. I said that clumsily. Let me say it again. In order for you to give something to God, give yourself to God, you must give yourself how? 100%. You see, in order to save you, God needs all of you. In order to destroy your life, the devil just needs a little piece. I'll say it again in the reverse order. In order to destroy my life, all the devil needs is a little piece of my life to which he has access. You remember the mustard seed? It works both ways. The kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed. It grows. The kingdom of Satan is like a grain of mustard seed. You allow a little of the devil into your life. That mustard seed from hell will grow. The only safety is a complete surrender of the life. And when that life is surrendered to God, Without hesitation, everything that person has is God's. Your house becomes God's house. Your car becomes his car. You give people rides to church. You invite them to your house for prayer meeting. Your food becomes other people's food. Your whatever becomes the property of God for the blessing of his sons and his daughters. And so tonight, I want you to consider and embrace the philosophy of give to get. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Matthew 20, verse 28, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. How many of you will say with me tonight, Father, help me to recognize everything belongs to you and give me a spirit that loves to give. Can I see your right hand? I mean, put your hands up if you're putting it up. Put your hands up. Hands down. Strange call. 
Is there someone who has a struggle with giving? You have a genuine struggle with giving. And you want God to take that out of you and replace it with generosity. You want God to give you a giving heart. If there's someone like that, can I see your hand? Are you serious? Stand up. We're going to pray. There are some miracles Christ performed immediately. There are some that took some time. Either way, God can perform the miracle of transforming the life. When God gave Moses instructions for building the tabernacle, the Israelites brought so much. What did God tell Moses to tell them? Stop bringing. Stop. Have you ever heard of a pastor telling a congregation, stop? We need some churches where the pastor says, that's enough. I've never met a preacher who has had the delight of saying that, that's enough. Now they say, that's enough sin. That's enough whatever. That's enough coming to church late. That's enough not reading the Bible. Never. That's enough offering. We don't need any more. Let us overwhelm God with our giving. Not just money. You can give money and go to hell. You must give what? The heart to God. When that is his, everything else becomes his. And I want you to get that. And when it is his, then God blesses your life. Your life becomes his project. And God will take that project to a successful conclusion. When you give your children to God as his, God will make sure that all is well with your children. When you recognize your house as God's, he will put his angels at the door, at the front, at the back to protect you. When your car is God's, he will protect it. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you to God for the challenge your word poses to us. Esteem others better than themselves. Father, the carnal mind does not understand that philosophy. But that's the way you function, and the proof of that is Calvary. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The God on this earth that is not received because we function is more blessed to receive than to give. But Father... We're dealing with light and dark. They're opposites. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The philosophy by which we live on earth must be the philosophy that functions in heaven right now. And that is a selfless philosophy, a giving philosophy. Dear God, we are born self-centered and selfish. And no selfish person will enter a kingdom prepared by an unselfish God. And so, Father, some of us have stood to say, I have a problem with generosity. Bless them for their honesty, Father. And now in the name of Jesus Christ, who said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down everything he has for his friend, his life. In the name of this giving, Jesus, Father, Touch those who claim to have a problem. And through the power of the life of Christ, transform that mind from selfish to generous. Transform that mind, dear God, from grasping to releasing. Please, Father, do that for us. Because as long as the mind is a grasping mind, that mind in that person with the person's possessions will be destroyed when you come. Perform that miracle, Father. Begin that transformation now so that we may see the joy, the blessings that come when we give. But above all, Father, we can give not just money, house, land, car, but to give the heart that you may make it yours so that our life becomes the very life of God. One more time, Father, I ask you to bless the guests who came. We are delighted with their presence Guide them, Father. Direct their steps. Bless their lives. And help them to fall deeper in truth, in love with the truth. As we leave this place tonight, 
May angels escort everyone to his or her domain or domicile. Watch over them as they sleep. Bring us back tomorrow, Father, to listen to the life-changing word again. I offer this prayer from my heart in Jesus' name. Let God's generous people say amen and amen.